Hey there, good morning. I'm going to give some time for people to start coming in. Um, hope you're well. Hope you rested well. It is Wednesday, April the 28th, 2021. Welcome to the Morning Watch. Today we're going to be in Acts chapter 8. Um, we're going to see this story continue to unfold of, uh, of the early church and how the Holy Spirit was was guiding and leading those leaders and those people in the church to for the gospel to continue to expand and grow and move into new places and interact with new people groups. Um, we're going to see that today. So, morning Kim and Robin. That's my mom. So, let's have a word of prayer together as people are coming in and we'll get, we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the day that you've given us. I'm not really sure what today's going to hold. Um, but we know, Lord, that you are, you've are you already been to the end of that. You're not bound by time and space. You understand, Lord, that that um, uh, you understand us. You understand our frailties, our weaknesses, our hang-ups, our, our gifts. And, Lord, we just pray that today you would use us in whatever way that you would see fit to advance your gospel, like we're going to see in today's reading. Lord, thank you for your cross. Thank you for seeing your son Jesus to die for us. And Lord, I just pray that as we study your word, that you would make these words jump off the page to us, that we would see exactly what it is that you would have us to see today that we need. And help us, Lord, to hide your word in our hearts so that we might not sin against you. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. There's Rosemary and Kim. All right. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8. So, there's really three big characters in today's reading. Number one, we see Paul, um, uh, that we knew as Saul. Saul has still not um, had his conversion yet. He's not really, he's not met Jesus yet, but it's coming. So, but we get to see, we saw Paul in yesterday's reading. We'll see it today, and then tomorrow is an amazing chapter where we see Paul being brought to Christ. Um, and being struck down on the road to Damascus. But today we also see the second character is Philip. We see Philip, who is also one of those deacons with Stephen, one of those original seven that was called to be a deacon there in the church in Jerusalem. And then we also, the Holy Spirit, is the major character in the story today because he is doing all of this. Everything that we see today is being orchestrated by the Lord through the Holy Spirit. So let's read. It says, Saul was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning. But Paul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging, both out, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went, Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs that he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims, and many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. A man named Simon had been a sorcerer there for many years amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the great one, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astounded them with his magic. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles that Peter performed. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for the new, these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy his to buy this power. Let me have this power too, 
he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. But Peter replied, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You can have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive your evil thoughts, for I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon exclaimed, that these terrible things you've said won't happen to me. After testifying and preaching the word of the Lord in Samaria, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, and they stopped in many Samaritan villages along the way to preach the good news. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south, down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the under Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and now he was returning. Seated in his carriage, he was seeking aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. It's Isaiah 53, actually. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. Isaiah was writing about Jesus, the suffering servant. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Okay, so what's happening in Acts chapter 8? There's a few things. Actually, there's a lot. First of all, we see Saul. This is now Saul who would become Paul upon his conversion. Saul was there when they uh, were stoning Stephen. He was holding the coats of those that did. Saul was a very religious man. Uh, a man who really felt like he was doing the work of God to destroy Christians, destroy Christianity, to completely eradicate this message that Jesus brought with him. And so the Bible says here that he would go in, Saul would go in and um, drag people out of their homes, believers, drag them out, take them to jail, have them executed. He was a very educated man. Uh, very influential, uh, but yet misguided, okay? And we're, we'll see that tomorrow um, when, when Jesus seeks him out. And Paul goes on to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Saul ends up becoming the apostle to the Gentiles. It's just an amazing thing. I long to go to heaven to be able to spend some time with, with Paul because that would be an amazing story to hear from him. Now, I think it's important in verse 1 for us to see what happens because the church, this stoning of Stephen, woke a wave of persecution there in Jerusalem against the church. And the believers left. They, they, they scattered. They left because of the persecution. And so because of that, it says they were, look at verse 4, but the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. So what the enemy meant for good, which was the stone, you know, the, the persecution and the stoning of Stephen, and God used for good. Because what happened is, as they scattered out of fear, what did they take with them? The gospel. They took the gospel into these other towns. They took the gospel into these other people groups. Uh, and God used it to spread the gospel news, the good news, to people. And so... The Bible talks about here in in in, um, in in verse four through really through verse twenty five, 
the gospel was taken to Samaria. Philip Philip took it there. Others took it there. Now Samaria, Samaria and Israel did not get along. The, these were they were actually related. Um, Samaritans were half Jewish and half other, and there was this hatred between the Jews and the Samaritans. And so the fact that the gospel so quickly here in the story of Acts moves into Samaria shows that the gospel is for every person. The good news, every human being, the offer of this free gift of salvation. Remember here we saw that Simon later on this sorcerer tried to buy it. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. And every single person that you know or comes in contact with, I don't care if they have more money than you, less money than you, a different skin color than you, a different amount of money in the bank account than you, um, more educated, less educated than you, it doesn't matter. They need Jesus. Okay? And so how often, my question for you and for me this morning is, how often do I neglect to share the gospel with somebody because I feel like they don't need it? Or they won't respond well? Or we're too different? Or uh, they kind of they kind of have their stuff together already. They don't really need that. Or they've done too much wrong. They couldn't possibly. We should never be the filters for who hears the gospel. The Bible is clear that we are to go and make disciples of everyone that we come in contact with. Now, will everyone come to know Jesus? Sadly, no. You probably know people that, that passed away not knowing Christ. Not everyone will. But we don't know who will and who won't until we talk to them about Jesus. Um, <clears throat> so, the gospel spreading into Samaria, other places. Now let's jump on down here for the next couple minutes and look at verse 26 on. So, look, it says, uh, verse 26, As for Philip, this is, continues the story of Philip after uh, this deal with Simon the sorcerer, who went to buy the Holy Spirit. Okay, you saw that. Uh, an angel said, go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem, to from Jerusalem to Gaza. Notice, the angel did not tell Philip, hey, you're going to meet a guy from Ethiopia, a very powerful man who, who, who you're going to lead to Jesus. No, he just said, go. Nothing else. No other instructions. And it's interesting because that's how God works. He oftentimes will not give you, very often he will not give you, all the details when he calls you to something he just says go and then you will figure it out as you go right give me today lord my daily bread and my dog is barking so i apologize for that and so this eunuch had been to jerusalem he was he was he was seeking after us. And this guy was the was the treasurer to the queen of ethiopia very powerful very powerful very influential and so the eunuch had been to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning home, and he was sitting in the in the in the carriage reading the book of Isaiah, talking about Jesus, this prophecy about Jesus, and so it's pretty cool to see, because um, so so my dog was barking this morning. I apologize. Get out of here. And so Philip sees him. Okay, Philip sees him sitting in his carriage reading reading God's word. And he says, Philip goes over obediently. The Holy Spirit tells him to go over and walk along the carriage, along, beside the carriage. Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? And the Ethiopian eunuch says, how can I unless someone explains it to me? Okay, that's powerful because that's our role as followers of Jesus to talk to people about what we know. What did Jesus say? Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them and teaching them everything I have commanded you. Okay? And so, out of your own knowledge of Scripture, out of your own experiences, out of your own understanding of what the Gospel is, we talk to others about Jesus. It's a word of mouth thing. Okay? And so, the eunuch comes to know the Lord as a result of that experience. He says, as they rode along the water, the eunuch says, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? This was a very sweet experience here, a very sweet little encounter here where God just moves in such big ways. Not every time will this be the result, right? When you share the gospel, not every time is somebody going to say, I want to know him. 
uh, the average person has to hear the gospel about seven times before they respond positively. Okay, so you might be the first one. You might be the first person that's ever talked about the gospel to somebody. Okay, you might be that person that when you talk to them about Jesus, they're like, "Yeah, I want to know him now," like this Ethiopian uni did. But again, the key here is obedience. The Holy Spirit led Peter or Philip. He went, and we see the result. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is the main character in this story. All right, so um, and then this, it ends up in verse forty. Philip went somewhere else and just kept preaching the gospel. All right, uh, who joined us since we started reading? Rosemary, Charles, Chris, my sister, Virgil, Kim, Patty. Yeah, Piper's been barking this morning. She's acting silly. All right, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, help us to see people as you see people. Help us to have the mind of Christ. Help us to be bold and courageous and not so worried about our daily activities that we forget to take advantage of opportunities that we have to share your good news. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. Well, listen, carry this stuff around in your head today. Uh, let it work on you. I know it works. Good. I know it's already working on me. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Acts chapter 9. Love you all. Have a great, great day.